Welcome back. This is Tucker. Let's talk weather. Aaron is expected to become a major hurricane in the Atlantic this week. We're looking at where the storm is headed and the threat level it presents. And for all our mainlanders, we'll take a look at the end at the severe weather threat this week too. And a happy hurricane season, everyone. Well, maybe not happy, but welcome to hurricane season. This is our first real big threat. We have Aaron right now, just a tropical storm, but you can see it in the Atlantic spinning around. A good time to uh, brush up on your preparedness if you live on any of the coastlines, especially in the eastern U.S. We're not going to waste any time here, so let's jump into the forecast and take a look at where this is headed and the chance that it makes landfall. Starting our forecast off with the latest on Aaron, just a tropical storm right now, but as we well know, there is a lot more potential here. Two other disturbances in the Atlantic, uh, one in the Gulf, not going to do anything, and one out here in the North Atlantic, uh, also not going to do anything, but Aaron... We'll take a closer look at here, and what you're going to notice is that we have a forecast from the National Hurricane Center already expecting it to become a major hurricane by the time we get into the weekend here. And I will also note, and I have seen this in my own forecasting too, that it is beginning to nudge a bit farther south, which is not great news, especially if you live on the coastline from North Carolina to Florida. Now, not time to panic, and we'll talk about why here in a moment, but uh, that's not really the direction you want to see it go. Also expected to become a hurricane sometime Wednesday or Thursday, and it will continue on a pretty steady track westwards here over the next few days. So let's talk about where it's headed, how strong it's going to get, and again, that chance at landfall next week. So how strong is Aaron going to get? Well, the water's very warm right now. That will not be a limiting factor. So we take a look at the wind shear in the Atlantic. Those red colors indicate a lot of shear, which is not good for storms. The blue colors indicate weak shear, which is good for these hurricanes. Now, I drew Aaron's rough forecast path here, so you can see over the next several days, it's going to be taking a path where there is not a lot of shear in place. It's really maximizing its potential. So there is a lot of room for this to become a major hurricane, which would be Category 3 or higher. As I move this into next week, I will mention some of the outcomes that we may see. One, if this goes out to sea, we won't have much to worry about, and it'll be eaten up by shear. Uh, two, if it does ride up the east coast, it will encounter higher shear and likely weaken a bit. And three, if it does end up going into the U.S., especially the southeastern U.S., that would be a problem. There still wouldn't be a lot of shear or time to weaken it. So this has high potential, though if it does go northwards from the Bahamas, it will weaken. And our model data here painting a similar picture where at the end of the week you see a cluster of outcomes here that place it generally in the category one strength box here at the end of the weekend, we're looking at uh, these models suggesting, once again, we're looking at more of a category two or three. And uh, I do believe a three is very possible. If not, it may be a high end two. And then next week, as it would be approaching land or hopefully going out to sea, it's more comfortably a category three major hurricane. So plenty of room for this to run. And because it will become strong, and that's very certain, this is regardless of whether it's headed towards land or not, a very important storm to watch. And now for the million dollar question, where is Aaron going? By the way, if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so because we'll be keeping you updated on this entire storm and any storm that comes this season. So we're gonna take a look at some of our ensemble members, which give you a range of outcomes, kind of like what we just looked at. And what you should be focused on is this red area right here. Each one of those red numbers basically indicates the core of a storm, and in this case, Aaron. I also want to point out these blue numbers indicating the core of a high pressure system that's going to help this steer Aaron. So let's get you acquainted with what we're seeing in the Atlantic. And I'm moving this forward. We're looking at Thursday and now moving into Friday. You see those colors light up because the storm's getting stronger. And uh, by the time we get to Friday, you can see it's still pretty far south here. The range of possibilities, not super wide, but those numbers on the north side, that's uh, a good sign for us. Also, this high pressure system out here going to be centered right over the Atlantic. And because it's there, it's forcing Aaron to take this path around it, which is what is bringing it to the East Coast and not just straight out into the ocean. Moving this ahead from Friday, this is where we begin to see things get a little more interesting. Still a lot of agreement here. On Sunday, uh, the European model, which is what we're looking at, says that it is going to be very close to the Bahamas. And then we see things diverge. And by that, you'll see some of these numbers begin to go more south and some of these begin to go more north. And this is going to be a critical time as we forecast this, the end of the weekend, Sunday. Because from here, you can begin to see 
that a lot of these on the north side, a lot of these possibilities, they begin to get whisked out to sea. The reason for that is because we have a low pressure system here. There's going to be a front hanging down into the Atlantic, and more or less that front's going to provide a path of low resistance. And just like humans, hurricanes like to take the easy route, so this would take it out. However, you still have a cluster of outcomes down here, and that's not as good because this path of lower resistance can't quite influence it when it's that far out of the way. And so what you end up happening, have happening here is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, those southern possibilities do have some chance to make landfall, and that would be in Florida. However, I believe that's a low likely scenario because as you can tell, many of those still get pulled up the coastline. Most of them do. And the thing here to watch is that as they get pulled up the coastline, even if they're not making landfall, there will be beach erosion, there will be big waves and rip current risks. The good news here, as you can tell, is that most scenarios, most outcomes, the overwhelmingly likely outcome here is that the storm does go out to sea. But as I move this back again, we'll watch it one more time, you can see there are still very close passes and not a lot of room for comfort. So while it is most likely this will miss, the East Coast still needs to be watching this closely and so does Florida. Now I'm going to show you the American model, which will be similar, but just so you have the full range of outcomes here. As we move into the end of the week and especially into Sunday, here we are. Still a lot of certainty this is going to come very close to the Bahamas at the end of the weekend. And Sunday, like I said, is our critical forecast moment. Amer the American model has a big cluster going out to sea. Once again, you can see uh, most of these outcomes do take it out into the ocean and some pretty quickly too, which would be a good thing. All thanks to this low pressure system out here and that path of least resistance, it offers the hurricane. But there are still a few scenarios on the south end of this. If this storm stays south, that's a bigger problem. And you'll see them begin to come very close to land no landfall except for one of these outcomes would take it right into the southeast coastline here. But still, several outcomes that take it very close to the east coast, enough so that it would cause beach erosion, big waves, rip currents, stuff like that. Still not as bad as a landfall, but uh, very close calls. Nonetheless, it does still appear more likely that this will miss than hit. So if you're seeing some people trying to scare you on the internet, you're going to get it as it is from me, and I'm telling you, we need to watch this very closely because it's going to be strong and it's going to be close, but right now, it is more likely to miss than hit. Now look at the weather across the mainland, and even if you're in a place that could be impacted by a hurricane, you still have some active weather too. Moving this into your Wednesday, what you're seeing is actually a front crossing the eastern U.S., and that's why it's going to be so stormy up and down the east coast. That's going to be Wednesday and Thursday, in fact. You're going to see these storms continue to pop up in the afternoons. There is a very low severe weather threat, but it's nothing too big. Meanwhile, it's going to stay pretty hot and dry across most of the central and western U.S. here. Uh, we'll get to temperatures in a moment, but I want to move this into the weekend and mention our real threat for any kind of severe weather it would be in the north central U.S. and northern Midwest. Heading into the end of the week and into the weekend as well as uh, one system could spawn a couple uh, strong lines of storms that come through. But as a whole, not expecting too much activity in the storm threats this week. And to look at the high heat coming our way, here we are on Wednesday, still very hot in the western U.S. Temps of the hundreds in the southwest and 90s across a good chunk of the country. As we head into the later days of the week here though, you're seeing the heat begin to shift more so into the central U.S. It'll still be hot in the southwest here where you see some hundreds showing up, but across the central U.S., that's a widespread area in the 90s and into the southeast as well. Looking at the weekend, you see the heat begin to do something a little more interesting. It's more confined here because we have a cold front coming out of the north, and that's going to trap heat to the southwestern third of the country. And next week will be very hot in that southwestern third. You got highs that are going to easily be in the 90s, even some hundreds, but it isn't going to heat up too much for the northern tier of the U.S. Unless you're in the west, that heat will migrate north next week and be confined to these areas. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to each and every one of you and let me know where you're watching from too. And of course, be sure to check back as I get more information, I'll be updating you here. I also post updates on my other social media so you can get good information there too. Anyway, uh, just time to watch, not time to panic. And I'll see you back here next time.